G'day! In today's video, I'm opening up a HP. This particular one is a 17 inch model. Over. We have the model number. Where are we? No. We're currently covered up. I'm assuming it might have been this one here, which was TPN I133. And to get into this, we'll go through the motions, which should be undo the screws we can see in plain sight. One, two, up the front. I'm assuming these need to come off as well to be able to get in there. Now, the reason why it's a bit hard to see in the video is because this is a 17 inch model and the camera's not set up for a 17 inch model. Nor can I get any extra height. There we go, one, two, two more under here. There we go. Uh, this also comes out. We have two screws hidden over here as well. There and there. Now, the reason why I'm opening this up is I believe it's got a failing hard drive in it. And while we're there, we'll also see what can be upgraded or changed in this particular model laptop. Go. Not overly a fan when there's hidden screws under the feet like that, especially when they're that big and chunky. That they should... When they're that big and chunky that they should... They usually have break or have issues when you try and reattach them, or depending how old the machine is. This one's only a couple of years old. This screw here doesn't want to leave. And from there, I should be able to pull up this bottom. There we go. Tab didn't want to leave. There we go. So now that we're in here, we can see one very small battery considering. This is a fairly standard sized battery. Uh, HT03XL. Looks like we have two RAM slots here. Of which, what do we got there? 16 gig of DDR4. Yeah, that's a pretty straightforward to, to remove. Pull the tabs out. <laughs> Didn't expect it to shoot that hard. And we were to change the RAM. We'll pull those tabs to remove the existing RAM. Tab out, tab out, springs up. Pull out, and there is a notch here. So when you get the new stick of RAM, all you need to do is line up the notch, put it on a 45 degree angle. There, and down. And we're installed. You don't have to do anything more than that. Once that's there, you're done. Over here, while we're looking around, we do have a NVMe SSD slot over here. So it would be potential, or you'd be able to put an NVMe M.2 SSD in this machine and leave the existing 2.5 inch SATA hard drive alone, or you can replace that with a 2.5 inch drive. Entirely up to yourself. What I want to do is take this out though. I'm going to run a hard drive or run a hard drive test on this using a program called HD Tune. And hopefully that will give me some results that back up what I think is going on with this machine, which I suspect it's got a failed one terabyte hard drive. This is being quite a challenge to get out. There we go. That goes off. That goes off. Pull this out. And similar to the RAM, this connector only goes one way. There we go. We have a, a one terabyte WD, which in a current day and age, a 10th gen I processor paired with a standard 7200 RPM hard drive is 
just a joke. This should not have ever existed with this combination of processor and RAM. Should have had a 256 gig S NVMe SSD or a 512 gig one, not a one terabyte. This is just bottlenecking the performance of this machine dramatically, even when it's healthy. So my suspicions have been confirmed. Running HD Tune or connecting this to a computer, tried to run HD Tune to run a health test and the computer basically did not want to even read the drive. So you know, this one is from April 2020, not exactly an old hard drive, but it has failed. So that would be getting put aside for now. And I'm going to be putting in a WD Blue 500 gig NVMe SSD. Find these to be decent value for money. This is what it should have come from, from the HP factory, not the hard drive it had. We I find people just get that because it looks like a big number and it's not really warranted. Talking to the customer, this particular one's just getting used mainly for emails, web browsing and photos. 500 gigs and be more than enough for this particular individual. Where they're not storing games, they're not storing movies. Yeah, similar to the RAM, I'll put it in face up. And, and with it, again, slight angle, pull down. So I'll go in slight, probably 25 degree angle. Push it in, lower it down, and put the screw in. From here, I'm going to be using a Windows 11 reinstall USB using the Windows 11 media creation tool. It's a free thing that can be created. It's got an embedded license. None of the data, I believe, can be transferred over at this stage. I won't be transferring the information. It'll just be a fresh reinstall of Windows 11 on this machine. And from here, what else can be changed? We could replace the Wi-Fi card if you want to upgrade that. We could put a two point. We could put a hard drive caddy and put one in and replace the DVD drive. We can replace the RAM, no point. Already got 16 gig. We could replace the charger port if it did, did get damaged, as it is only pushed in. Sadly, going by the screw spinning there, the hinge part here is broken. Go over the other side, tighten them up just slightly while we're in. And now from here, it will be a reinstallation of the bottom cover. Get the screw out that I didn't want to leave. Over the top. I've got it covering these connections over here. And I should just be able to squeeze. No, it's been a bit stubborn on this side. There we go. Click, click. And then it's a matter of putting said screws back in. Really shiny silver ones go under the covers. And they seem to be resisting the magnet. And the duller grey screws simply go in the exposed parts and the black screws over here. Oh. Now this part here, ah, there's a bit of plastic broken up there. There we go, now we go again. Next up, we've got these two silver ones down the front here. One and two. DVD burner can now go back in and put in the remaining exposed screws and then we've got to put the rubber feet back on. Two. Three. And four. We have a one that's got a bit of a Slightly less of a hill or 
thickness to it. That one is the front. And, and there is one at the back. So right now the adhesive stayed fairly intact for me. Granted this is only a couple of years old, this machine. If you were trying to do this on one that's about five, six years old, I'm expecting that the rubber feet would break, the adhesive has been weathered or the temperature's been affecting it, so it would just snap. For me, this did go together reasonably well. So now I'm going to install Windows 11 on here, and this machine will be back up and going once more faster than factory. Hope this helped, and I'll catch you later. Bye.